Joining me now is actress Megan Jed Martin. Hello, hello, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Doing well, thank you so much for the time. So I always enjoy asking actors, in particular, this question. If you could have any actor, past or present, play you, play the story of your life, who would you want that actor to be? Oh my gosh. I mean, well, in a dream world, it would be like Amy Adams or Emma Stone. Uh, but I think I, my life has to become a little bit more exciting before they want to play me in a movie. <laughs> I still have some people that I think are in contention for me. Uh, first, we got Patrick Swayze. I know with that hair, you know, clearly I, I have a little ways to go. I, I can't get that mullet yet, but I'm going to keep trying. And then uh, Leo DiCaprio because of our stunning resemblance, you know? Oh, yeah. that's. I mean, I would like to have Leo play me as well, actually. I should change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you began modeling at, at a young age, I believe five years old. When did you realize that acting, the entertainment industry, was something you wanted to be a part of, something you wanted to pursue? Um, well, it was one of those like weird things. It, it sounds very cliche, but it was more like acting found me than I found acting. Like, um, I just started at such a young age, I started uh, performing in plays and I was always like putting on my own plays in my house with my friends and like making my parents watch it. And they were like, please stop. This is too much. We're over this. <laughs> um, and then eventually I was like, oh, wow, this can actually be a job. That's pretty cool. And I got lucky early on and it sort of snowballed from there. So five years old, when you had your first modeling uh, gig, do, do you have any recollection of that? Do you remember that experience? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do actually. It was like, it was a fashion show and it was for Disney, like a Disney clothing line, funny enough. And um, I loved it. I just got to like walk on a stage in cute clothes and dance around. I thought it was great. I was like, people are paying attention to me. I'm a middle child. So, you know, any way to get attention. <laughs> I feel like at uh, five years old for me, since I was a, I was a fairly chubby five year old, at least from what I can remember with, with the pictures and stuff like that, I'd be like the mini Jack Black. Like if there was like some <laughs> sort of movie or something, I feel like he could have been the father. I mean, I feel like that could have worked, but clearly that yeah. time has passed. <laughs> I mean, hey, whatever works, right? I think all, all five year olds have that cute little chubbiness. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. So how did Camp Rock come together? Uh, everyone, when I'd announced this interview, everyone was super curious about that. How did Camp Rock come together? Yeah, okay, so, um, gosh, that's like, I have to rewind my brain because I was 15. It was 13 years ago that I, was, that I filmed Camp Rock. Um, and I, I auditioned actually originally for Mitchie, the role that Demi played. I think they were pretty much auditioning like all the girls for that role and then they would go from there. And, um, and I, but I always knew, I always knew Tess was more my character than Mitchie. <laughs> and, um, so yeah, just auditioned, sang, went, there were a couple rounds of auditioning. We did one like really long day where we danced and we sang and we acted. We met with each other, like they mix and matched the different actors who were up for the roles. And um, then when I heard I got cast, flew out to Canada, did four weeks of dance rehearsals, I think, like song and dance rehearsals, and then made the movie. That is super cool. That movie was my jam. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, <laughs> so transitioning from child actor to, to adult actor, what is that like? Because recently I spoke with Lane McNeil, who was in Die of a Wimpy Kid. Uh, and I, I, I just think that's so that such an interesting transition. And I wonder if it's yeah. like different for different actors. So what was that like for you? I mean, it's definitely a difficult transition. I think people sort of start to see you as uh, only the teenager or the child or whatever it was when you sort of had your success. And um, part of the transition for me is I now live in London, which is a bit crazy. Um, and I, so I went to drama school here and I've started doing a lot of theater work here. And that was like a way I could sort of distance myself from being trapped as like a teenage actor and have people see me as uh, the adult that I am. I did see last year, The Actor's Nightmare, uh, you made your professional theater debut. And I'm super curious, because I've interviewed some theater actors and some just people out, outside of theater. What is the preparation like for you? How, how, how was it kind of different between like acting for TV, movie, and then theater? Mm -hmm. It's very different, actually. I, I consider them basically completely different skill sets. I love theater, but you obviously get a really long rehearsal time with theater. So you can, you can start out on day one, like not really knowing what you're going to do, what the character is going to be, what you're like. A lot of people don't even know their lines really in the beginning. Um, I mean, I, I would never do that, obviously. But, <laughs> but and whereas on a film set, like you show up, that's it. You're doing 
you're doing the part day one. So it's, you have to do a lot more preparation for film and TV beforehand. And it's not so much collaborative the way theater is. You're not like creating something with your actors and your director as much as you, you do in theater. Is theater something you want to do some more of? Definitely. I love theater. I mean, obviously right now in, in a COVID world, theater is not happening, rightfully so. It's the, until we can do it safely, we shouldn't be doing it. But, um, but yeah, I, I love theater. I remember when I was, uh, so I just graduated with my undergrad, but when I was a senior in high school, I started, uh, I, 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 I think it was mandatory. I had to take this theater class and I was really loving it. Like I loved the, I, I, I loved everything about it, although I sucked at it. Like I couldn't do anything. It was just bad. <laughs> But I remember, I guess my, my teacher saw some potential in me and he wanted me to do a, a role, but it was this bald dude. And I'm like, well, can I get a bald cap because I don't want to shave my, my majestic hair. He's like, no, you'd have to shave your head. I'm like, there is no way in hell that I'm gonna be shaving my head for any theater thing. So I feel like you could understand that. Like, why, why would I shave my head? I'm a senior in high school. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I mean, bald caps are great. That, that's half the fun of theater. <laughs> that's right, but I, I didn't understand. Like, I didn't really want to ask him why I had to shave my yeah. head. I feel like a bald cap would have sufficed, but what edge, you know? He just wanted you to be method, I guess. He wanted or my dad's real. bald, so I guess he wanted me to like look even more like my dad. I'm like, I'm not ready for that stage of my life yet. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any over the course of your career any like bizarre moments either on set I'm sure that there's so many that, that you could think of any bizarre yeah. moments um yeah I mean like the film and television industry well the acting industry in general is such a weird business like um even even what was it a week ago two weeks ago I I just recorded this um audio drama for audible the amazon company um so it's like it's like a play that can be listened to and um i had to do a like a romantic scene um where i'm being proposed to but because it's an audio drama and because of covid the actor who's playing my love interest we couldn't be in the same room so we were in like different recording studios we'd never met each other we ne we never had a conversation nothing and we're like having this very romantic proposal happen, <laughs> which is pretty bizarre. I was like, everybody's like crying. I was like, this is, this is a strange experience. I've never met you, spoken to you. And yeah, we're like living one of the most intimate moments that someone can live. <laughs> Talking about romance, are you a fan of The Bachelor? I, okay, so here's the thing. I've never actually watched The Bachelor. I know, I know, everyone watches it. And I always like see on Instagram, everyone having their like bachelor parties, but, um, <laughs> bachelor, bachelor parties and bachelor watching parties. Um, but no, I, I haven't, I, my, my foray into reality TV is pretty limited. I've only recently found The Real Housewives of New York. So I've just been sticking to that for now. <laughs> You know, I, I have been such a huge fan of The Bachelor because it's like three hours or two, three hours on a Monday. It's mindless television. There's drama. Wow. Like, you really can't go wrong with that at all. But yeah. let me tell you, my mom, who, who was the one who got me into The Bachelor, didn't like the past couple seasons. So she, she deserted me. Like, I, I'm, I'm in my house alone watching The Bachelor for two to three hours. So I need a Bachelor, buddy. If you ever get into it, you let me know. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. I mean, it seems like something I would like, but it's one of those things that I've like had to distance myself. Otherwise, I would just be sucked in. <laughs> so since you moved to London, are there any like new shows that, that, that you kind of uh, gotten around to watching uh, that you oh, didn't well, know in the US? Speaking of reality TV, there is a show called Love Island. I've heard which of it. Is, yes, it's a very big UK reality show. And it's, um, it's normally on all summer long and it's the most addictive brain drain television that you can think of <laughs> i didn't know if there was like a version of the kardashians like london-based kardashians over there i didn't know is. there's a show called made in chelsea which is similar to that but i actually haven't watched that yet i try you know i'm trying to trying to support the actual tv versus the reality tv of course <laughs> i totally understand that so u.s because you are from the u.s moving mm -hmm. to london uh comparing like the different uh, overall like the states of acting how are they comparable how are they different like were there any big surprise when you moved down there um yeah it's i think that one of the things i really love about london is it's 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 great for like creating your own work um it, there's a lot more support for artists there's loads of small theaters like a lot of the pubs have theaters attached to them um so you can you can sort of like spend 
not a lot of money, like five or 10 pounds, which is probably roughly like eight or $12. And you can see an incredible play, which I, I think that's probably true of New York. I've never lived in New York, but I would imagine there's a similar sort of thing. Whereas I, when I lived in LA, there was very little theater. It's, you know, all about film and television. And understandably so, but um, I don't know. I just think there's sort of more space for creativity here than I was finding in the States. Ooh, that, that's wonderful news. That, that, that's really awesome. So tell me, with, with COVID, this COVID, uh, COVID world, things are pretty uncertain, but tell me the primary goals for you uh, for the rest of this year, 2021. Oh my God, survive is number one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can do that. Um, uh, God, so many things have jumped into my mind. So many so I'm, I'm now I'm thinking about the presidential election. I'm like, don't get into it. Don't get into it. <laughs> um, I guess for me, it would be just about, um, well, I hope that I see more support for the arts because I think there's been very little of that really in in um, this COVID world. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about how Netflix and music is like their survival during lockdown time. And yet they're not understanding that like the arts are suffering the most during this. So um, I think hopefully it's just sort of like raising awareness for the arts and um, especially the theater industry, which is just absolutely screwed basically <laughs> until we can figure out a way to do it safely. Yeah, absolutely. I really hope that there's a, a solution soon, but I mean, this is such a crazy world we live in right now. Oh, uh, I want to end this on an even more positive note. Uh, Unstable Bitches, uh, what is that? <laughs> So Unstable Bitches is a short film that I did uh, three years ago, and it came out uh, pretty recently. It's, and it's a funny, silly, dark comedy where uh, about two actors, two aspiring actors who are pretty much horrible people. They're like the worst people of all time. And it's, uh, it's, it all sp spirals out of control. <laughs> You seem so nice. You must be such a great actor that being able to play uh, an unstable bitch. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all have many sides to us, don't we? <laughs> true that, true that. Megan, I'm going to leave the floor to you. Anyone you'd like to thank? How could people find you on Instagram, Facebook, anything like that? Oh, well, thank you so much for, for speaking to me. And this has been lots of fun. Um, Instagram is Megan Jett, M-E-A-G-H-A-N-J-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. I don't have a Twitter, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on which way you look at it. Um, yeah, and uh, I recently joined Cameo. So if anyone's interested in some shout outs or something, they can find me on there. Um, that's it.